click the bell icon to get latest videos from ikeda hello friends in this video we'll understand the different types of handoffs that are available to us and in which scenario which handoff can be used the various types of handoffs are listed here the first one is hard handoff soft handoff queued handoff delayed handoff network assisted handoff mobile assisted handoff intra system handoff and inter system handoff first we will have look at what is the difference between hard handoff and soft handoff in hard handoff the existing connection with the base station is first broken down and then a new connection is made with a new base station whereas in soft handoff the existing connection is still there while the new connection is made with a new base station and then the existing connection is broken down hard handoff allocates different frequency channels when a new connection is made in soft handoff same frequency is used in soft handoff same frequencies is used while making a new connection hard handoff is not complicated because we first break the connection and then make a new or a fresh connection whereas soft handoff is a bit complicated hard handoff is used in techniques like tdma and fdma whereas soft handoff is used in techniques like cdma we all know cdma stands for code division multiple access and every user is divided on code and not on frequencies means every user is transmitting the data on the same frequency hence in soft handoff we use the same frequencies while connecting to a new base station in hard handoff because we have to first break the connection and then make a new connection the link transfer may fail sometimes due to unavailability of channels in the new base station in the soft handoff it degrades the channel availability meaning while i am having already a connection with the old base station i am trying to make new connection with the multiple base stations due to which multiple channels in the nearby base stations are busy hence it degrades the availability of the channels or the availability of the channel reduces for making new connections or other handoffs now we move on to the next handoff type which is called as queued handoff in queued handoff there is a queue created for handoff request and then the handoff request is handled one by one the queuing of originating calls reduces the probability of call being blocked but it increases the probability of handoff being blocked because when we put the calls in queue there is still the chance that every call will get answered one by one and because of this all the channels in the cell remain busy if any handoff request is made all the channels in the cell are busy and there is no channel that is used for making handoff request queuing of handoff is much more important than queuing of originating calls the reason being as i said the service suggest the user becomes more frustrated when a call is dropped then a new call is not been made now we move on to the next handoff type which is called as delayed handoff this is a two level system means we have two power levels here the mtso always attends a handoff request first then a new call origination request here the handoff request is made as soon as the first power level is reached periodically every 5 seconds if the handoff is not made and the power level still decreases it reaches the second power level after which the handoff is done without any question meaning the handoff is done with no condition put forward in such scenario if the channels are not available for handoff then the call will be dropped now we move on to the next handoff system which is known as inter system handoff in inter system handoff if a mobile is moving from one cell to another cell which is served by another msc 
then the handoff is known as intersystem handoff. Since the cell to which the user is moving is supported by different MSC, it is not sure that the local call may remain local. It might happen that a local call becomes a long distance call and the user becomes a roamer in the next cell. Here, the compatibility between the two MSCs or the MTSO must be considered while making a handoff. We now move on to the next handoff system which is known as intrasystem handoff. In intrasystem handoff, if a user is moving from cell A to cell B, which is served by the same MSC or the MTSO, then it is known as intrasystem handoff. It is very much sure here that a local call will remain a local call and not become a long distance call. The next handoff type is called as mobile assisted handoff. Here, the mobile stations or the mobile phones, they themselves check the power levels from the neighboring base stations and report the power levels to the base stations. Once it is identified that the power levels are constantly decreasing, then the mobile station itself initiate the handoff request. Hence, it is known as mobile assisted handoff. This handoff request is initiated when the power levels from the nearby base station are exceeding the power levels from the current base station. Now we move on to the last type of handoff system which is called as network control handoff. In this handoff system, the base station constantly monitors the power level of all the mobile stations and this is done on the reverse channel. Reverse channel is the one which is used for voice transmission from base station to the mobile station. Once the base station identifies that the power level of the mobile station is decreasing below the minimum level, it initiates the handoff request. In the base station, there are special receivers known as locator receivers which are used to check the power levels of the mobile phones in the neighboring base stations. This is identified by checking the RSSI signal which is known as received signal strength indicator. This strength indicator level, this RSSI signal level identifies the power at which the mobile is transmitting or the mobile is radiating. Once it is identified that the power level of the mobile phone is below the minimum usable, the locator receiver reports this RSSI values to the MSC and then MSC initiates the handoff request. This is how the network control handoff takes place. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.